BitWit's coverage of Computex 2019 is brought to you by Fantex, Cooler Master, Gigabyte, Enermax, Team Group, NZXT, and Corsair. To learn more about our sponsors, click on the links below. We're here at the Azrock booth and I'm taking a look at this beautiful bastard, the X570 Aqua. This is going to be sold in limited edition quantities, 999 units available with a nice little branding there so you can uh, sort of geek out and show off to your friends. But it's got a $999 price tag, that's right, a cool grand for this board, but you can kind of see why. They actually have an integrated water block uh, from Cooler Master actually, who designed the water block as well as uh, this uh, aluminum housing here, which looks beautiful. Um, there's a water block on the X570 chipset as well as the CPU and the entire VRM solution, which is absolutely phenomenal. The other cool thing about this board is that it supports Wi-Fi 6, which is pretty common for uh, all the X570 boards so far. But even cooler than that is the support for Thunderbolt 3. And I'm sorry, it's really dark uh, in, in this little corner here, but Thunderbolt 3 is supported. Generally, you only see the support on Intel boards, but now we're seeing it uh, creep its way into the new AMD platform, which is super exciting, being able to drive uh, so much data through a single cable, uh, whether you're talking video or USB, any kind of connectivity like that. Very exciting uh, stuff for Azrock. I can't wait to see this guy in action. We also have something a bit more mainstream. This is the X570 Creator. 10-phase power delivery here. It's actually 10 plus 2. You have a fan here on the on the, uh, on the the chipset along with two M.2 PCIe Gen, Gen 4 uh, by 4 slots. You can see it's a bit more bare bones. There's no RGB, which I think is actually kind of a plus in some cases, and there's no like cover here for the I.O. shield or for the I.O. area. Um, of course, we do have the X570 Pro, which is definitely a bit more targeted to gamers. This is also a 10 plus 2 phase power design. Um, we also have uh, one and two M.2 slots, PCIe Gen 4. And down here, this is actually pretty exciting, the X570M Pro 4. This is the first and only uh, X570 Micro ATX motherboard that we've seen here at Computex. No other vendor is actually making these right now. The motherboard vendors are actually following the trends of the case vendors to see what kind of form factor motherboards they should be making most. And right now, there's kind of a dearth of really cool Micro ATX cases. So this is the only one. However, if you are all about the Micro ATX form factor, which I certainly am, they do have the uh, the X570M Pro 4 here. If you want something even more compact, we have the X570 Phantom Gaming ITX TB3. TB3 again standing for Thunderbolt 3, which means, yes, you can actually connect uh, Thunderbolt 3 to the back here. There it is. It should be, have a, oh, there it is. Okay. It's really hard to see back here. Thunderbolt 3 right there. Um, kind of like the uh, the design. I wish they went more color neutral instead of having red accents. That would have been a little bit more forgiving on people who want to truly customize the look of their systems. You do get a fan. It's kind of slanted. Kind of fan is slanted uh, on the X570 chipset there, which is connected to uh, the VRM heatsink here by way of heat pipe. So uh, this is providing active cooling, not just to the chipset, but the VRM as well. Of course, you got an additional heatsink up here. Uh, two dim slots, DDR4 with higher speeds than we saw on uh, X470. And if you look at the socket itself, this is actually really interesting. They're using a non-traditional LGA 1151 socket mounting system here for CPU coolers. Look at that. I was like, what, what the heck? It's because on a traditional AM4 socket, uh, it actually takes up a lot more space to have uh, to have the, the, the mounting hole situated like this. And so on a mini ITX form factor, ASRock said they would have had to compromise and sacrifice certain features by putting the standard AM4 socket uh, mounting solution onto this board. So instead they decided to do something really wild and uh, throw some LGA 1151 action in there. Pretty interesting. Next up we have the X570 Phantom Gaming 4, which is sort of the ATX version of the mini ITX board we just saw. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about that. A little bit more interesting is the X570 Phantom Gaming X. This is one of their uh, flagship boards. Uh, you have tons of RGB lighting, again with the red accents, not sure what that's about, but this actually gets a 12 plus 2 phase power design with Dr. Moss, so that's going to be a higher quality MOSFETs, uh, increased efficiency, and lower thermals overall. Um, fantastic board if you're going to overclock. Additionally, we have the X570 Tai Chi. You guys are all familiar with this series. Um, I love the actual design here. They're talking about a, a next revision actually incorporating this uh, sort of steampunk wheel to be spinning. I think that would look pretty sweet. Uh, of course, you have a very nice RGB aesthetic. Again, 12 plus 2 phase power design here, uh, 12 for the CPU, 2 for the memory controller. Uh, upgraded um, connections for the EPS 12 volt connectors, 8, 8 plus 4 pin. I don't believe this is uh, this is not part of the thermal dissipation solution, but uh, this, this this aluminum heatsink certainly is. Uh, heat pipe in between both of those, and yeah, damn, this is I think this is their their actual flagship mainstream board. If you're not if you're not counting the X570 Aqua, uh, but all these boards from Azrock are looking extremely promising, and the fact that they're coming out with so many X570 boards on launch. Uh, for the Ryzen 3000 series just shows how confident they are in AMD's next-gen platform. Very exciting stuff. 